Hey there YouTube, I figured it was time for another vlog, Olympic vlog. As you know, I've been doing these vlog series for uh, almost a year now and uh, I think it's super fun. Obviously, I have a super unique chance to be a full-time athlete, living honestly the childhood dream and training for my third Olympic Games alongside with my wife also participating in the same events, same sport, same national team. And um, I feel like I I owe all the people out there uh, that maybe are not as fortunate um, to share that journey. And uh, here is another episode of that Milano Cortino, Cortina vlog with me, Victor Althorpe. Since last time, it's been quite a roller coaster of downs and finally some ups. Um, I was, I got sick going into the Salt Lake City, which is home ice, almost my my home country at this point, is where I train all season because we have no ice rinks in Denmark. Fastest ice in the world, so it's also where you make the qualifying times for the different distances at the World Championships. Sophia gets sick, my wife, I get sick as well, and both of us race terribly worse than we've done at training sessions and. That was a big hit to the morale because uh, it was really where we were looking to do the new national record. We were looking to qualify for all the distances at the World Championships. And ultimately, we only qualified for the all-round event, uh, which was just a huge disappointment. Um, man, I was excited for that World Cup. I had done such good times at practice. And this is just elite sports. Could have happened any day. Could have happened at the Olympics. And yeah, it's easy to say that that's why that's why we enjoy skating. Uh, that's why we, we like sports because it's not predictable and you got to risk everything and you have no idea if you get anything in return. So after that, I uh, had quite a down period. I um, ultimately, I went to Quebec, uh, just raced. Uh, it was more of a, a matter of my representing Denmark. Uh, I still woke up. I was super tired there, still sick. Uh, retrospect really would not have liked to go there. That said, crazy is the rink, so bright in there, super cool, so well organized also. Uh, ring right by a bunch of hotels and lots of spectators. So I hope to go back to Quebec and obviously be fitter to race. From here and onwards, things got a lot better. I took 10 days off with no skating at all, partly because I had a foot infection. I don't know if I've ever showed you a photo of that. If I have it on my phone, I'll leave it in the video here. Not delicious. Um, I did have some skates that were um, that I skated well on, but they started hurting me. And as we were traveling overseas already for the first World Cup um, of the whole season, my feet just got a little swollen on the flight and skating the next day really backfired. And that was a pain. So uh, now I've got new skates from Viking, super happy with them. As you will see in a second, they skate well. Um, or they definitely work for me. So, um, so yeah, 10 days off. Believe it or not, I started boxing. And I don't know how well you guys know me on YouTube from watching these videos, but I am not the boxing kind of person. Uh, I would say I'm very much of a pacifist. And I think that was the reason my coach Mitch uh, suggested that I do box uh, during these 10 days. And I think I boxed almost every day. I, I got the gloves, signed up for a club and um and it's been boxing simply just to give me a little more of a when when shit hits the fan get tougher i'm always uh i think i'm my big strength again i can go through a lot of pain and um almost kind of to some extent enjoy that pain and i think that's what made me a good athlete almost obsessed with, with digging deeper going further um and and that's a, a thing that makes me a good athlete uh have a lot of discipline i believe but I also think when things don't go well, I, I do have a tendency to like underperform compared to what I should do. And so like on good days, I can really bring out more than I thought I had. And on bad days, I'm like, well, this, this is not, it's not what I expected. It's, it's off. And, um, and boxing, just getting literally hit in the face <laughs> can, can get you to that point, can get that rage out where it's not so much like, oh, my blades feel a little off. You're just gonna hammer through they can feel off any day, you can feel off in an Olympic final and I gotta prepare for that. 
So boxing has been, at first it was really that getting out of my comfort zone, but at this point it's also been, it's hard to define, but it's also been part of a, um, I don't know, like a revelation, how fun it is to learn new things, new skills. Um, and I think try to try to open my mind a little towards that because skating uh, easily just becomes, you know, a, a habit. And I think that's one of the flaws, especially when you've been skating for many years, is that things become habitual, uh, especially t skating technique. So to try and constantly think out of the box and change the way I skate, look at things differently, technically, not be afraid to like, you know what, today I'm gonna skate with the other arm or things like that just to try it out. And then obviously most things will feel terrible and then you can go back towards your initial skating. But I think that's super important to keep that explorative mindset, regardless of your age. I know I'm, I'm 29 and there's people that are in their early thirties that retire from this sport. So who knows, maybe I just have like five years to go or so and I gotta make use of all of those years which I promise you, I, I intend to do so. After all this, skating went so much better. I started sitting a little deeper, something that I allow myself to think like this season has already been, you know, compromised beyond uh, my worst fear. So all I have was the world championships all around. I was even thinking about not doing it, just going to coach Sophia, but then felt better and better at practice and managed to put out some wild workouts where I was like, damn, if I can just do this workout, world champs, it won't be terrible. And ultimately went there, Crazy crowd, uh, I think 8,000 people in the Max Aisha Arena in Germany. And I did basically three fantastic races. My 500 meter was the best I've ever done. My 5K was also, I believe my best 5K ever, ranking 14th in the world. Stoked about that, um, especially from where I came from with 10 days of no skating and then only about 20 days before standing on the starting line. And then a good 1500 meter. Uh, so that was fantastic, finished 14th 5K. Really stoked about that. Sophia, my wife, finished 17th in not just her first World Champs, but her first full long track season coming from short track. Um, that was super cool to witness. And then from that day on, we've been a week to Turkey on vacation and a week in Russia. Sophia is originally Russian, so went there to see her family. Um, obviously, there's some tough things going on in Russia. Uh, they're from St. Petersburg, so thankfully it's, it's quite far from um, the war. But man, I hope that thing will be over soon for the sake of yeah, all the people involved. War is a terrible thing. It's hard, especially when training a lot in the US for us to travel to Denmark. Sophia sees her family once, maybe twice a year. Um, and she's a family person, so that's not ideal. But uh, we're grateful to be safe. And now looking ahead a little, there's some fun things coming up. Um, this off season is also where I evaluate a bit. I just made a video on the HUMN Ketone IQ that's been a like serious game changer for me in in this last season. And um, and it's also where I just try and think like, what can I maybe use next year again? It's just such a competitive field. I know I'm not like crazy spoiled genetic, uh, genetically. I'm, I think I really need to do everything I can training wise um, to to make it work and to give my best myself the best opportunities to perform well, uh, next year, World Champs, World Cups, and of course, the Olympic season. So I look out for every supplement or small thing in my life or in my training that can make me a better athlete or a healthier person in general, actually. And uh, came across a few brands that I reached out to um, and really looking forward to announce some partnerships soon. I'll be using some new souls from Souls, <laughs> great name, actually. And uh, I'm gonna meet up with them, make some content on that. I am also using been using all of this for a while i have a really strong policy that i test things quite thoroughly before i go out to we're now plus 100,000 people on the youtube channel so i'm not just gonna bullshit all of you i um i tested myself and there's so many products you guys don't hear about that did not work out for me um but those that do i i really want to uh, yeah work with them because i do think that's a fun part of of being an athlete you really get to do everything to uh, to optimize things and it's fun sharing that when it when it works so you guys don't have to spend all that time um so tent is a massage stick i'll um i'll be working with in the future i was pretty excited about that and then doing some different things some more of a biohacker uh style stuff with a company called neurovisor that uh, i also look forward to share with you all there'll be so much more if you don't follow my instagram uh hop on there i do update it more frequently even though obviously these long edits are 
more intimate. And I, I keep those on YouTube, but intimate as can be with 100,000 feel fine. That's a cool milestone. I, uh, I, I've never really been, I never really sat down and thought about the amount of people that follow this because uh, initially it's not really why I, I did it. And I mean, to me, I'm just sitting right now in my mom's painting at Salier because I'm out visiting them and they're asleep and I'm a little jet like. Um, but there's nobody but me in this camera. So I don't really feel like all you people are actually watching. And I think when that happened, I uh, had like this little mind blowingness where I realized that, wow, that's, that's super cool. And it's something I will try and prioritize, especially one day when I'm not skating professionally anymore. Uh, Cause I do think it's, it's honestly very giving. And I wish I had something like, like this growing up where, uh, yeah, inline skating is, is hard because it's such a technical sport and so underdeveloped in a lot of areas. So just having knowledge and I, mean, I spent my life gathering it from so many different training places. So uh, sharing that is cool and it's fun. And I, I appreciate when you guys show appreciation towards it. And that makes me realize that maybe this helps people more than just me skating around in circles. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty fantastic. And uh, thanks to so many brands sponsoring me and all of you guys following here, I will and can keep doing that. So stay tuned for stuff. Next vlog, I'll be training like a crazy person for the next many months. Uh, the first of them here in Denmark and moving back to the US when ice kicks in. And um, it's gonna be a super fun journey. 